don't you stop it. Are you going to let Billy and his friends be murdered because they stood up for us, homesteaders? I can't interfere with officers who are enforcing the law. this way and you're hiding. No, sir. You've done it before. That's why we're running you nested off our range. We're sick of you people protecting murderers like him. That's a lie. You're putting us homesteaders off our claims because you big ranchers begrudge us a little of the open range. Throw these things out. Hold on there. Don't ever try to beat me to the draw, Matson. Or the next time it'll be through the head instead of the hand. Drop those guns and get out of here. I don't reckon you'll be bothering me again, ma'am. Why do you stick up for us nesters? My father was a nester. Besides, you folks come in mighty handy for a meal or bed when a fellow's on the dodge. Poor boy, you must be starved. I'll throw some vittles on the table and a jiffy. Thanks, but after what happened, I'd better keep moving. Well, good luck. him from Lincoln down to the old Allen place. You'll be gone by the time you get there. Well, I'm not going there, Matson. I got a lead on where he's been hiding out these nights. You reckon he knows where to find him? If he does, it's too bad for Billy. Another chance, Billy. Will you go peaceably? Sure. One thing. 
to the saddle with the west in my heart, my eyes to the prairie skies, with a happy song as a jog along, born to the saddle am I. Born to the splendor and the charm of the plains, I'm free as the birds that fly. And I find romance in the broad expanse, born to the saddle am I. The life I lead is fine indeed, my cares don't mean a thing. I'll greet each day with a grin and say, it's grand to live and be able to sing. Born to the saddle with a song on my lips, in tune with the wind that sighs. And I'll never change as I ride the rain, born to the saddle am I. Looking for trouble? Billy! What do you think of these New Mexico bad men, Trigger? You're right, they wouldn't make common chicken thieves back in Texas. Come on, we gotta catch up that nest of horses. You know, if I had it to do over again, I'd let that organ burn so I could sell you a new one. <laughs> you want us to help you load up, Mr. Miller? Well, what's the use? They got my horses. Well, whose horses is them? I sure am much obliged to you. But sure, it's just like you, though, to get them back from them thieving ranchers. You're all right, Billy. Billy? Well, my name's Roy Rogers. Oh, sure. Anything you say is all right with me, Billy. Uh, meet my friend, Mr. Milhouse. Well, howdy, Frog. Why, you are Roy Rogers. Huh? Do you know him? Know him? Sure I know him. I used to go to school with him down in Texas. Didn't I? That's right. I was in the third grade nine years down there. <laughs> say, I heard you as a deputy sheriff or something, was you? Was is right. What happened? Well, the new sheriff thought I was too young, so I headed west looking for a job. Now imagine him saying a thing like that. You know, I'd give you a job, but I got more men than I know what to do with right now. Oh, don't worry about me, Frog. With trouble like this going on, there should be room for another peace officer here. I tell you what you do. You ride into town with us and put in your bid. There's a shortage of good peace officers around here. Thirsty Trigger? I'll be back in a minute. All right. Well, sir, you sure put that over. But you didn't need to cover up with me. I put what over? Oh, that Texas business. Why, well, say, Billy never went to school a day in his whole life. But if you say so, he's a college graduate. <laughs> Let 
Let me do that, ma'am. Thanks, young man. You can tell your folks you had good raising. Oh, you're welcome. Who shall I say give me the recommendation? Daniel Moore of Connecticut, sir. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Moore. My name's Roy Rogers. This is my daughter, Ellen. I'm obliged to you, sir. Well, that's nothing. Helping newcomers has always been part of my job. Where are you folks bound for? We haven't decided where to locate. Just looking the country over. It's a mighty big country. Yeah, it's a big country to find a dollar in, as the fellow says. Get aboard, Ellen. We've got all of 10 miles to make before sundown. Can I help you up, Miss Ellen? Why did you ask us our name and where we were heading for? Well, because if you aim to take up land and be farmers in cow country, you're heading right straight for trouble. Oh, we don't aim to. You see, Father's not a farmer. He's a storekeeper, a merchant. Oh, well, that's different. Then you won't need a lawman to sort of look after you, will you? Of course not. But thanks anyway. Oh, babe. Come on, Ed. Come on, boy. Cleaned him out. What's the use of an outlaw having so much money? He can't spend it. Well, he thinks he can. Well, he's getting so sure of himself, a man wouldn't believe it. Big pardon, gents. You mind if we use some of this walk? I saw him first. Five dishes of ice cream. Mm. Yeah, make them double dishes. Mart, you cover the rear. There's a big one for you. Hey, you don't eat ice cream, do you? Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd figure on eating all five of them. Yeah. Reach high and quick. You can't do that. He's my partner. I got him. Him and his partner both. Hey, what's oh. going on? We ain't done nothing. What's the matter? Well, Mr. Page? What can I do for you gents in the land office? The administration has sent me to find out why cattlemen are allowed to run settlers off the public land. Ain't that a local problem? I'm afraid you don't realize it's a national problem. We must have room for the crowded people of the East, land where they can safely settle. Their protection is your duty. And what are you doing about it, Marshal? There's nothing I can do about it, except feel sorry for the poor devils. You should be able to control a few cattlemen, you a United States Marshal. That's just it, Page. Being a federal officer, I can act only in offenses against the United States government. Nestor's is a local problem. Then as far as you're concerned, there's nothing can be done to stop the robbery and killing of innocent men and women? What is this? Well, these men claim I'm Billy the Kid, and it ain't so. That here's a man who knows me. Yeah, but who knows him? Well, he does. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow. I'm not the man you want. I'm Roy Rogers from Texas. Everybody knows you can lie faster than a hound dog can lick a plate. You think so? Well, then take a look at this. Deputy Roy Rogers, Sheriff's Office, San Antonio, Texas. I know where you got that. Off the last man he killed. Son, you better give an account of yourself. Well, I'm here looking for a job. Everybody knows we got no jobs for outside punchers. But I can do more than punch cattle. I've been a sheriff's deputy and I've wrangled horses. Yeah, and he's a musician, too. Yep, we know what sort of music. Finger exercises on a 45. It just happens that Billy the Kid can't play a note or sing one either. We'll call your bluff. Get that guitar. Cool customer, isn't he? Thanks, partner. What shall I sing? No, anything. I wonder why he feels so happy. Words should rhyme, but who's got time just 
sing a little song about anything. I wonder why he feels so happy. I know lots of things worth knowing, but you won't have a need of an education where you're a going. I am haunted. You mean wanted. Sing a little song about anything. Wonder why I feel so happy. What do you think of a crazy gink who feels so cheerful? Is he a guy who never cries? Oh, how fearful. Sing a little song about anything. Wonder why I feel so happy. Do you suppose the fella knows the meaning of worry? One of the few who's never blue or in a hurry. Sing a little song about anything. I wonder why I feel so happy. I know lots of things worth knowing. But you won't have a, a need of an education where you're a-going. I'll be singing. You mean swinging. Sing a little song about anything. I wonder, wonder why, why I feel so happy. You boys ready to admit you made a mistake? Let me through. He shot my brother. Let me at him. There's only one man that can shoot like that. Now try and claim you're not Billy the Kid. Hold on there. What's the trouble, Dave? We're still finding out what's up. Put that low-coat fool under arrest. The rest of you, get out. Not you. Come back here. How about our reward? Sure, we brought him in. Huh? You mean I did? You can wait until we figure out who you brought in. Come on, Pat. What do you mean you what brought him in? in? Won't do you no good to lie at yard, Billy. There's a man that knows you. Yes, I knew Billy well. Rode the range with him and was his friend until he went wrong. Looking at you, I'd swear you was him. But you're not. How do you know, Pat? Because I killed Billy last night. That's too bad. Your point of view is hard to understand, Marshal. What's too bad about killing a murderous outlaw? When it comes to protecting those poor nesters you were so worried about, Billy was more used to me than all my deputies. He had the ranchers plum buffaloed. How do you know? They mistook me for Billy the Kid, and they sure took out on a high low. Hunting a job for yourself, ain't you? You need a new Billy the Kid, ain't you? You ain't gonna take that job. It's too dangerous. Well, so's my resemblance to Billy Dangerous. I might as well put it to some use, hadn't I? That maybe we can hold off letting it out is how you killed Billy the Kid. You mean have Rogers help the homesteaders do the things Billy did? Yeah, but not the bad ones. Think you can handle the job, Rogers? Well, why not try me? See here, if you think the United States government's going to legalize an outlaw... But well, this boy ain't an outlaw. You'll just be impersonating one. And if he shows the same nerve on the job that he's shown here, why, he'll have the whole territory eaten out of his hand. That's what worries me. You're putting too much power in the hands of an inexperienced boy. Maybe you're right, Pat. But I don't know any steady family man that would take the job. From now on, you forget that you knew him as Roy Rogers. He's deputized to be Billy the Kid. Savvy? Yes. Raise your right hand. Let's have the key to your best room. But suppose the people find out Billy's here with you? Then it'll be much of trouble. Nobody's gonna know he's here unless you tell him. I'm alone up there, Sabi. No, uh, I, I wouldn't tell him. Billy back to Lincoln for trial. We'll put up at Ramon's halfway house tonight. Who sent it? Don't say. Maybe a trick. We better get over there just the same. Get out and round up the men. Thanks, Pat. Now, when do I make my getaway from you? Watch your hurry. I'm still not sure you're the right man for the job. Well, what do you got against me? Nothing yet. Just what do you mean by that? I mean I rate a man by what he does. Well, why don't you wait and see what I do? Because there's something wrong with the setup. I can't believe you wanted the job of being Billy the Kid just to earn a deputy's pay. You had something bigger in mind, didn't you? Yes, but... Well, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. All right, go ahead. All right, ever since I can remember, I've heard of Pat Garrett. What a fine fellow he was. 
Well, I just wanted to know you and work with you and learn to be like you. Young fella, if I'm wrong about you, I'm awful sorry. But every time I look at you, I seem to see another boy who talked the same line you do. The boy I finally had to kill. Oh, but I'm not Billy. I'll make good. Well, after what you just told me, I sure hope you do. <laughs> now, look. We can make your getaway out of that window after I bring your supper up. You'll find your horse near the corral, already saddled. Thanks, Pat. Remember, you're plenty hated around here, so you better get your guns out of my bag now, just in case. All right. Here they come. Find an officer. An officer? The sheriff's in room number one upstairs. Thank you. Who's there? <gasps> Excuse me, miss. You looking for someone? Well, I... I was told I'd find the sheriff up here. Well, what seems to be the trouble? Well, my father's been robbed by a thieving shopper. Well, where? Out in the barnyard. Oh, you mean the corral. I'll go with you. All right. That's the queen, sir. Don't take that man's money, you thieving sharper. Gosh, you scared me for a minute, Billy. Don't call me Billy. Well, the marshal said to. Why not? Make him give you back the rest of your money, Dad, while the sheriff's here to protect you. Don't worry, Ellie. I'll have my money back once I get the hang of this game. Oh, you've been doing that ever since we left Connecticut. A quarter here and a dime there. Why, well, you lose all the money you saved up to open your store. Are you fixing to open the store? Yes, sir, I... Why, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Let me take your money like this. Why, I don't take money from people that's going to start stores. I make money for them. Dollar boys. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, sir, I should say so. We'll prove it to you. Get out the instruments, men. Ellen, those instruments would sell. Come on, everybody dance. Where your father's gonna open up his store yet? Not yet. Where would you advise? Right here in Lincoln County. Why? Good police protection. <laughs> That's not enough. How's business? Well, I can guarantee you one steady customer. I knew we'd meet again sometime. I knew we would too. Ellen, I. Yes? Would. Uh, What were you going to say? Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, I've got to prove to you all that anybody, a rank amateur, can take one of my Dixie brand instruments and play it just like a professional. Now, I'm going to pick somebody out of the crowd here, somebody that don't know a thing about music. How about you, stranger? Who, me? Yeah, try it. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> right up here. When the sun is setting on the prairie, my heart is there with you. Once again, we ride across the prairie and find Golden beam is a friend to cheer me. I close my eyes. And
and pretend you're near me when the sun is setting on the prairie not hurt bad. Says the right for shooting at the sheriff. The sheriff? Well, I'm the sheriff. The man who escaped was my prisoner, Billy the Kid. Ooh. Billy the Kid? The murderer? Well, I wouldn't let a little thing like that worry me if I was you. He's only killed 20 or 30. <laughs> that, Pat. Life and property safe again, all because an outlaw's on the job. Yeah. Well, you got to eat crow this time, Pat. You were so sure that he'd start out protecting poor folks and wind up robbing rich ones. Yeah, all right, Dave. I reckon you were right and I was wrong. But I hear the ranchers are driving off the nest of stock so they can't break sod. Well, it's better than the burning and killing we used to have. Hey, listen to this. Nathaniel Moore announces the opening of his new bargain store in Lincoln. What? And I thought Yankees were smart. Yeah. Well, here we go again. I guess that fella never heard what happened to McSween for trying to buck Morganson. Keep your prices cheap as they are, Moore, and you'll change the buying habits of the entire town. Oh, you forgot something. Don't you want your souvenir of our grand opening? Gosh, thanks! Careful, Big Chief. Don't go around shooting people. Kids from 6 to 66 sure can cut some fancy tricks with the Dixie brand. With the Dixie brand. Oh, they ain't too much to know. All you've got to do is blow with the Dixie brand. With the Dixie brand. Slide trombones and clarinets come complete with sharps and flat. If you buy my fiddle strings, I'll throw in some extra cat. Buck a week, a dollar down. Be the gayest man in town. With the Dixie brand. With the Dixie brand. There's a song in every horn, and you'll never be forlorn. With the Dixie brand. With the Dixie brand. Oh, choose a melody. You can play it one, two, three. With the Dixie brand. With the Dixie Brand. Piccolos and violins, sweet guitars that you can strum. Buy a pair of drumsticks now, we'll throw in a lovely drum. Buck a week, a dollar down, be the gayest man in town. With the Dixie Brand. With the Dixie Brand. What's all that? Well, it's just what you ordered, a full musical department. Well, I didn't order all that. Besides, I can't pay for it right now. Oh, shucks, your credit's good with me. You can pay for it in 90 days. A man can't refuse merchandise on terms like those. Come on in, Millhouse. <laughs> you drew a right smart crowd down here. Maybe you can't late to make some sales for me. How'd you guess it? You ready, boys? Let her go. You'll be sharp if you try this harp. Try this pipe for the thrill of your life. 
a slight trombone a zither or a flute a mandolin or a violin and a big bass viol is cute better yet by a clarinet a piccolo or a swell banjo Wake up the band, wake up the land, Dixie's the bear, it will stand the test. You'll be sharp if you try this harp. Try the fight for the thrill of your life. <laughs> Hello, friend. Uh, now my... Good afternoon, sir. I just noticed your advertising more. Very clever. It's convinced me I ought to buy you out. I'm not selling. Five hundred dollars, you said. Well, I only intended giving you three, but I'll make it five rather than hold up the deal. Huh. You fellas wouldn't be so smart if you knowed who was standing behind you. You wouldn't expect us to fall for that old trick, would you? Well, don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> Better reach, boy. It's Billy. Disarm him, Frog. So you're the smart aleck that wouldn't fall for that trick, huh? What seems to be the trouble? Trouble? Mr. Morganson doesn't like competition, so he's brought Mr. Matson and his friends down to make a sellout. I understand you've been looking for me, Matson. What's on your mind? If you won't speak up, I will. Leave the settlers alone, or you might lose more than the use of that hand. And you, Morganson, leave this store alone, too. Well, I just came in to sort of look over the stock, friendly-like. Friendly like, with these gunmen? Why, these men are some of the biggest cattle ranches in the county. Well, yeah, we just come in to pick up some of these bargains. Sure, we're customers. Why, uh, why, uh, I was going to give more a big order. Well, if that's the case, pardon me. Tell the gentleman some merchandise, Fro. Well, I should say. You can sing hymns to him and you can dance to it. Auction them off, Fro. Maybe some of these men will bid them in. Miss Moore, you come over and take the gentleman's money. Now, what am I offered for this very fine Dixie brand concertina? Ten free easy lessons goes with every one of them. Now, even a child can learn to play them. Don't be afraid. Speak up. This man bids a hundred dollars. So. Thank you, sir. Take the gun out of the man's belt, too. Now, Mr. Morganson, this trombone is just the thing you need. I've heard tell that you're a big noise around this town. What am I off? Two hundred dollars. So, give the gentleman his horn, Frog. Do you know how to play it? No. Like this. Yes, Miss Alma. You've been a mighty good friend to us, even though you are a... An outlaw? Would it make any difference to you if I weren't? Well, you better be going now. Not just yet. Uh, you were going to tell me something. Well, I was just going to warn you that the sheriff is coming to our opening. He might walk in any minute. All these men bid $50 apiece for what's left. <laughs> We're going back there and get that money. Mr. Moore? Yes, sir. What can I do for you? Well, let's have that money. What? Those men are coming back for it as sure as shooting. I'll keep it for you. Don't you worry. I'll have it in a safe place. In that tin box? Come on, let me have it. Now I see through your game. It was a slick roundabout way to rob those ranchmen, and rob me too. 
Come on, hand it over. Get him. We'll get the storekeeper later. Sheriff! Sheriff! Sheriff, I've been robbed. Who robbed you? Billy the Kid. He got away with $500 or better. Are you sure it was Billy? Yes. Hurry, he's getting away. Don't worry, we'll get him. shooting till I saw that paint horse of yours and, well, I just knew it was you. Give me that storekeeper's money. Well, I already took it back to him. So you already took it back to him, huh? Well, that's not Moore's. A bunch of the nesters gave it to me. Another to... yarn. I shouldn't have believed your first one. About wanting to work with me and make good with me. Well, if you'll only give me a chance I'm to... giving you a chance. The same chance I gave Billy. He had fair warning to get out of this country before I killed him. So have you. You'll think different by tomorrow morning. Good morning, Miss Allen. I got your money back from Billy the Kid. You didn't. Is he all right? Well, now, I don't know. I never laid eyes on him. I found the money in his saddlebags while he was out of camp. Well, thank goodness. But you see, this money doesn't belong to us. Billy returned ours the same night. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't want to doubt your word, miss, but that's mighty hard to believe. But it's true. He did bring it back. You can see for yourself. Mr. Garrett, I was wrong. He only took it to keep the ranchers from getting it. 
Wrong. Now, look here, mister. You've got to be mighty careful about being wrong in this country. It might mean shoot. I wouldn't keep all that loose cash around here, either. Oh, Billy said it was all right. You see, everybody thinks that he stole it and kept it. Even you thought so, Mr. Garrett. It's no laughing matter, Ellen. Sheriff, I want to swear out warrants for Morganson and those bullies of his. Now, look here, Mr. Moore. This isn't Connecticut. The law's as new here as... as you tenderfeet. You mean you can't haul these rapscallions into court? I sure I can, but what's the use? They don't want to be acquitted by a jury of their friends and relatives. This is cattle country, and the cattlemen still run it. It's okay, Billy. I've been waiting for you and them horses. Got them yet? Sheriff Garrett sort of tied me up on that horse deal for you settlers. But don't worry, Alan, your money's safe. Ain't the money that worries me. I've got to turn sod on 40 acres or get out. You mean you'll lose your claim? That's why the ranchers have been stealing our horses, so we can't prove up our homesteads according to the law. Yes, I know. Has Matson been giving you any trouble lately? No, but him and his crowd was here a couple hours ago looking for you. Might be them coming back. My gum, it sure looks like it. I'll hide you in the barn. No, it's too late. They've seen me already. If he breaks into the open, fire a shot. All right. you're riding the same horse. I don't know what had happened to you if it wasn't for him. I almost took a shot at you again. Say, what's the idea of running me down like this? Well, Roy, it seems like this whole thing's a horse on me. Hi, George, I'm sorry I didn't give you a chance to explain about that money. Well, that's all right, Pat. Thanks. I wish that was all, but it ain't. You're through. I know you've done a good job, but it seems that Mr. Page went down to Washington and squawked plenty and... Dave Conway got his orders to turn you loose right away. Well, what's going to happen to the homesteaders? That's going to be tough. You know, those cattlemen don't fear a thing but federal court. Well, why don't we run them in there? Well, the U.S. District Court only handles crimes against the government. Say, Pat, those ranchers haven't got us beat yet. We've still got a chance. Have we? Yes, if I can get some teamwork from Frog Millhouse, and I'm sure he'll be glad to help us. Was that music peddler? <laughs> <laughs> Wonder what happened to his horses. <laughs> Let's go find out. Hey, Morganson. What do you want? Well, uh, Mr. Morganson, uh, you see, uh, well, what I'm trying to say is, do uh, you reckon you and me could talk a little business? You've got a lot of gall coming here. Well, I know I have, but you see, I've got to sell out my whole stock of Dixie brand musical instruments. And cheap, too. I wouldn't have any more of your junk if you gave it to me. Hello, Millhouse. Hello. What happened to your horses? Want to catch up to you? You know who got my horses? My friend, Billy the Kid. What are you handing us? I ain't handing you nothing. He held me up and stole all my horses. What does he want with horses? Nesters. He steals all the stock he can get his hands on. And he's getting $50 a head, too. Stole your team, eh? Well, ain't that too bad. Now, ain't it? And I thought he was my friend, too. 
couldn't tell us where we might find this friend of yours, could you? We might get your horses back for you. Well, last time I seen him, he was heading for Apache Pass. And he's a following a big bunch of stolen stock, too. Hey, Burton, get out and spread the word that Billy the Kid's been located. I sure do hope you get my horses back. Uh, Mr. Morgerson, don't you think you'd like to try my line of Dixie brand instruments? Not interested. Well, I reckon I might as well be going. You're staying here. What do you take us for, a couple of fools? Yeah. Huh? Uh, no, no, no. Now, when they get to Apache Pass, this is the way we'll work it. What are you making me do this for? Billy's your friend, ain't he? He won't think you'd bring up somebody to spot him and take word back to the boys. Funny business. You'll be here pretty soon, Pat. You better pull out. Good luck, Roy. Come on. Get him later. Let's get the stock. Come on. Seen any stolen horses? No, sir. This herd belongs to us. We're just bringing them in from pasture. That black looks like an army horse. <laughs> well, that's one of the best stock horses I got. Raised him from a colt. Let's have a closer look at him. Get down. Both of you. Look at that hook. You're all under arrest for having horses in your possession that were stolen from the United States Army. I reckon we made a mistake. You sure did make a mistake. And this time, you won't stand trial at home. You'll face a United States court. And you'll serve your sentence in a federal penitentiary. Billy! Hold it, Matson. That's not Billy. I killed Billy the Kid the night he nearly shot your hand off. This is Roy Rogers. He's made the country safe for settlers. 
And he's going to be my chief deputy. Fresh copies of the prisoner song. A dollar each. What's the matter? Ain't there no takers? I'll see you in jail. Once again, we ride across the prairie. Don't leave me! 